partake of the blood as well. Remember what Jesus did for us. He gave you power, authority over every curse, over every demon, over every demonic power. He freed you from the sickness, sin, and disease. And we thank you, King Jesus. Thank you for joining us in worship tonight. It's an honor and a privilege to have our friend in uh, Yemi out of Ferson here with us tonight. But we're going to receive tithes and offerings. This is uh, Friday night, so this is for the house. Later on, we'll, we're going to receive an offering for uh, our fr friend and Apostle Yemi out of Ferson. Um, but let's go ahead. If you need a credit card slip, please raise your hand. If you'd like to go online, you can go to our website at glorifierchurch.com. You can click on the donation button there. And if you're making a check, please make the GFC or Glorifier Church. You can bring your uh, offering. As soon as you have it ready, bring it to the treasury boxes up front. We appreciate you supporting what God is doing in and through this house and uh, transforming lives and even speaking into nations. So we're honored that you're here tonight. Yeah, just bring it forward. It's okay. And um, while you are doing that, we're, we're going to pray over it later. But while you're doing that, I'd just like to announce next week, we're, our service is not going to be on Friday night, but it's going to be bumped back to Thursday night. We have to do this because of our agreement with the other church. They're having a three-day conference in here, so we have to be out on Friday and Saturday, so we're going to uh, have a meeting Friday, a Thursday night, and Pastor David's going to be speaking. Some of you know him. You, you might remember him from the past, okay? But uh, it's in, and then again, the first week of next month, I'll be back in the uh, speaking again. And so we have a, a big lineup. Um, if you haven't checked for a while, there were, for a long time during COVID and stuff, you know, that um, I'm, I'm speaking as it's past already. How many are living in the future right now? Amen. Um, you know, uh, we were, our schedule was very open and flexible and quite empty, actually, but it's very quickly filling up again. So we have some of our um, friends from the past, just dear brothers um, and, and friends and, and people that we honor and trust coming in. So if, if you need a bulletin, there's one on the, uh, in the back or it's in the lobby on the table. I know I print them out. I know I'm old fashioned. I still print on paper, but uh, some, I just have to have it, see it there in front of me. And I love that. I get it. I, I, I can connect with it a lot better that way. But uh, also on our website, I continually update that. So there's been a few changes, but Glenn Bleakney is coming back again. Yes, and um, actually, a, a Apostle, um, there's a whole bunch. There's a whole bunch. I, I'm already booked out through the end of almost July. So uh, we have Chris Carter coming back, and we have uh, just a, a bunch of people that are, are uh, some of our favorites. So... Uh, P things are beginning to move again and, and shake loose. So I just appreciate that. Okay, let's pray over this. Father, we receive this offering tonight and lay it at your feet. And we ask that you would multiply it. Take it like the five loaves and two fishes, Father. Multiply it where everyone in your kingdom has an endless supply of everything they need, Father. We thank you that the riches of heaven are, are ours already and that there's a never-ending uh, supply in everything that we need. Father, you've given us victory in every circumstance. You've, you've created us as overcomers. And Father, we ask that this offering would be blessed and that it would, um, because of how we honor you with our time and our money, Father, we ask that you would, in return, save the loved ones in our family, bring healing to those who are sick around us, Father, those ones that are near and dear to us. And Father, Give us opportunities to reach out every place we go. And, Lord, we just ask that your kingdom be extended for your honor and glory. That's what we're here for, to release the very kingdom of God and to release power and authority of heaven, bringing those things 
from heaven into the earth. And we just ask your blessing upon it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, yes. Tonight we're honored again to have um, Apostle Yemi Adafersen with us. Uh, it's been almost, it's between a year and a half, almost two years, I believe, since he's been here. And he's been one of our favorites. He, he, uh, anybody that can build a church of thousands of people in the heart of Benin uh, has something going for them, okay? Uh, it's one of the hardest places on earth, I think, to build a church. And he was successful at it. Uh, but he always carries a word of, of authority and power and true identity of who we are. And uh, so would you just welcome Apostle Yemi out of Fairson? Um, good evening to every single one of you. Um, we do thank God for your lives Amen. and for what God is doing in you, what he will do through you, or what he's doing through you and what he will do for you. He first does in us so that he could do through us. Yes. Then he can do for us. So we do, we do give God the praise. We give him, give him all the glory and... Um, we thank God for answered prayer. Um, we prayed a lot yes. to get you out of the old place. That's right. That's right. And we thank God for, thank God. for bringing you here, yes. which we believe is a stepping stone Amen. to acquiring your inheritance in the land because you have sowed and in his vineyard and in the land. So may the harvests that God has appointed for you be released from the heavens and from wherever on the earth they are by the hand of the angels into your hands. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want to share something with you, just some thoughts or some things that the Lord has taught me over time and and what he is saying and calling us to at this time. Without a shadow of a doubt, we are at the end of the end and we're just a couple of minutes if not seconds to that hour when we're expecting the Lord to come in the clouds of glory dispensationally speaking the earth was created by God in six days and one day is as a thousand and a thousand is one day. So we're talking about 6,000 years of the earth lease period um, to man. God leased the earth to Adam for 6,000 years or mankind through Adam for six days or for 6,000 years. From Adam to Abraham was two days or 2,000 years. And from Abraham to Christ was two days or 2,000 years. And from Christ to now is just about two days or 2,000 years. So the lease of the earth to mankind is about to expire. And if Christ is coming for an ecclesia, that has attained the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ, then we have a whole load of growing up to do in such a very short time. So because we're at the end of 
the sixth, almost at the end of the sixth day, and the seventh day is the day of the Lord or the 1,000 year rule of Christ on earth, then God has to compress a lot of activity into such a short space of time that literally the harvesters will overtake the sowers or the reapers will overtake the sowers. So we're going to see a lot of rapid change and a lot of rapid shifting. And it's incumbent upon us to be able to discern the times and move with God and make the, the necessary changes, first of all, in our mindsets. There's got to be mindset transformation. Be ye not conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind with the word of God. So then we become transformational agents to bring a reformation to the society around us so that there can be sustainable revival. We don't want an outpouring that is short-lived. We want an outpouring that is permanent. Yes. That when any people come into this hub, their lives are changed forever. So we have come into the time of birth pangs for which Jesus described in Matthew 24 the times of sorrows. So the whole earth is groaning and travailing, awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 going down. And that word son over there is a Greek word huos, which is the highest level of sonship, where we have grown to a level where we exemplify the character, the nature, and the lifestyle of Christ. So there are five levels of sonship. The first level being napios, infants that are still drinking milk when we should be on meat. And it is only those, the hewer sons of God, that will carry the resources of the kingdom to adjudicate them in uh, righteousness to advance the kingdoms of God in the earth so that the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Amen. So we're in the time of birth pangs and the birth pangs will continue to increase in frequency and amplitude until the things that God wants to birth out of the realms of the spirit into open manifestation can come through without a stillbirth nor an abortion. So God wants to use us. So it's no longer about your agenda. But about us taking up his agenda. And if we're going to take up his agenda... Then touch your neighbor and say, you're anointed to die. God wants to kill you to yourself. He wants to kill you to your ambitions. He wants to kill you to your aspirations. So that you are dead. So not you that liveth, but Christ that liveth within you. If Christ is going to fill you, if you're going to be filled with the fullness of the Godhead, then you have to die to self. Thank God for COVID-19. Because it forced us into a place where we had to reassess, reset, retune, recalibrate, reboot, reformat, and everything. And we can't do things the same way we did them before. He's doing a new thing. And we can't steward this new thing 
with an old mindset or methodology. Touch three people and say, you've got to shift. Nineteen is the biblical number of faith. Us, including the Hall of Famers in Hebrews chapter 11, are 19 peoples that mark that hallmark of faith in Hebrews chapter 11. So God has been using COVID-19 to develop capacity in us and faith to move beyond our present circumstances and birth all the things that God wants to bring forth in this season. So my text is 2 Kings, the third chapter. In 2 Kings, the third chapter, we have a story about Joram, Jehoshaphat, the king of Moab, and the king of Edom. Joram succeeds Ahab. He is king of the northern kingdom, Israel, whilst Jehoshaphat is king of the southern kingdom, Judah. The king of Moab that used to pay tribute to Joram, after Ahab had died, rebelled against the northern kingdom or Joram. And so Joram is going to go to war against the king of Moab. And he reaches out to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, to ally himself with him and together with the king of Edom to go against the king of Moab. And so we will take up the story from the 13th chapter, the 13th verse, excuse me, or for the 12th verse, excuse me. Here begins the reading of God's word, the third chapter of the second book of Kings, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Scriptures. Verse 12, Jehoshaphat said, Yes, the Lord speaks through him, so the kings of Israel, Judah, and Edom went to consult Elisha. Why are you coming to me, Elijah asked the king of Israel. Go to your pagan prophets of your father and mother. But King Joram of Israel said, no, nope, for it was the Lord who called us. Three kings here, only to be defeated by the king of Moab. Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, I wouldn't even bother you or bother with you except for my respect for the king, for King Jehoshaphat of Judah. Now bring me someone who can play the harp. And while the harp was being played, the power of the Lord came upon Elisha. And he said, this is what the Lord says. This dry valley will be filled with pools of water. You will, you will see neither wind nor rain, says the Lord, but this valley will be filled with water. You will have plenty for yourselves and for your cattle, cattle and other, other animals. But this is only a simple thing for the Lord. For he will make you victorious over the army of Moab. You will conquer the best of their towns, even the fortified ones. You will cut down all their good trees, stop up all their springs, and ruin all their good land with stones. And the next day, about the time when the morning sacrifice was offered, water suddenly appeared. It was flowing from the direction of Edom, and soon... There was water everywhere. Meanwhile, the people of Moab heard about the three armies marching against them. They mobilized every man who was old enough to strap on a sword. And they stationed themselves along their border. But when they got up the next morning, the sun 
was shining across the water, making it appear red to the Moabites like blood. It's blood, the Moabites explained. The three armies must have attacked and killed each other. Let's go, men of Moab, and let's collect the plunder. But when the Moabites arrived at the Israelites' camp, the army of Israel rushed out and attacked them until they turned and ran. The army of Israel chased them into the land of Moab, destroying everything that they went, the, everything as they went. They destroyed the towns, covered their good land with stones, stopped up all their springs, cut down all their good trees. Finally, only Kerhashereth and its stone walls were left, but men with slings surrounded and attacked it. When the king of Moab saw that he was losing the battle, he led 700 of his swordsmen in a desperate attempt to break through the enemy, lines near the king of Edom, but they failed. Then the king of Moab took his oldest son, who would have been the next king, and sacrificed him as a burnt offering on the wall. There was a great anger against Israel. The King James says Israel, Israel suffered great indignation and the Israelites withdrew and returned to their own land. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Thank you for glorifier. Thank you for your servant, David, and your handmaiden, Rhonda, and all the people that you have gathered in glorifier. We thank you for tonight. We bring this gathering under the auspices of the Lordship of Jesus. For where two or three are gathered together in his name, there he is in the midst of them. So we invoke your presence by the speakings of the blood of the eternal covenant, even the blood of Jesus, to, to be t a tangible manifestation here in our midst. Lord, we lift up our hands to you and we exercise territorial authority and dominion yes. over the whole of Lake Mary. Yes. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we deploy angelic armies to contend against all strong man structures of the powers of darkness over this region. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And we destroy their networks. We abort all their assignments and operations. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Arise, O oh God, and let thine enemies be scattered. Now, Heavenly Father, speak to us. May your word have free course. May it not return to you void. May it be a fruit in every life. May it galvanize every single one of us into a place of action. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So that you are exalted Lord Jesus and Heavenly Father you are glorified. Therefore we ask you precious Holy Spirit to come and help us. We give you preeminence here even now. And help us to navigate in the realms of the spirit. And do what you do, Holy Spirit. We just yield ourselves, spirit, soul, and body. As your instruments to be used by you. So that the Godhead is glorified. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My text is in the 27th verse. Then the king of Moab stood, took his oldest son that would have been the next king or heir, heir apparent, and sacrificed him as a burnt offering on the wall. So there was great anger or indignation against Israel. And the Israelites withdrew and returned to their own land. In spite of the fact that the prophet had prophesied that God had given them victory. In spite of the fact that the prophet had told them what to do and assured them that there would be a victory. And they saw God move. 
they dug ditches. And God filled the ditches with water. Without a raindrop falling from the heavens. So without a shadow of a doubt. They knew that God was backing them up. They knew that God's presence was with them. They, they were mindful of the, the words of the prophet who was the mouthpiece of God. That there was a victory. And in spite of all that, they failed. Because the heavens belong to the highest bidder. So, we have come into a season with God that we are in, get, we're primed to take the land as, just as the children of Israel were meant to cross the Jordan and take the promised land. Yes. We are prophetically, in addition, in a transition season. We're in the month, according to the he, the sacred calendar, the month of Iya, which it straddles the first month of the year and Sivan that we're coming into, Nisan and Sivan. Yes. So we're in a month of transition. Historically speaking, the children of Israel were traversing the wilderness in a 49-day walk to Mount Sinai. Where on the 50th day, the Lord would come down on the mountain. The mountain would quake. There would be thunderings and lightnings. And he would come because he wanted to meet with the people and to marry Israel unto himself. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2 says uh, in the Amplified Version, a Passover. Well, Passover was a betrothal ceremony. While Sinai was a marriage ceremony. And the Ten Commandments that Moses was bringing down were the wedding vows to espouse Israel to himself. So from, from, the, from, the, from the exodus of Egypt into the wilderness, God was emptying them out of their Egyptian mindset and mentality. Even though they had come out of Egypt... In here, they were still in Egypt. And so he has to feed them with the bread or the food of angels called manna to shift their frequency from a world Egyptian type frequency so that they could begin to operate at the divine frequency of God, of the frequency of, of God. And even though they were eating spiritual food, to spiritualize them, their souls and their mindsets, their mentalities, their disposition, their worldview, their intellect, their volition, their emotions were still locked up in Egypt. God had to, was, was trying to cleanse and purify them so that by the time they got to Sinai on, on the 49th day and celebrated the 50th day, which is the Old Testament type of Pentecost. Penta means 50. Yeah? So that they could receive the Torah. Moses was going to bring the Torah, which in the New Testament is called the law, but in the King James Bible it's a mistranslation because it lumps the ceremonial laws and all the different laws together. But the Torah basically were the rules for life and living. And so God was going to come down and he wanted them to not to be the embodiment of the living word. Moses had been up that mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. God spoke and imparted spiritually the word, the Torah into Moses. So Moses was a living embodiment of the word. But he, all he had was two tablets of stone. But in those 40 days... He was a carrier. He was a, living, he was a living embodiment of the word of God. And that's what God wanted for his people. And that's what God still desires for his people today. That we don't just talk the talk. 
but we're an embodiment of all the principles of the word of God. So that people see us as a witness of Christ. Because we're living the character, we're living the lifestyle and the nature of Christ. So that we can become the salt of the earth. To influence your spheres of interaction in our society. And be the light that will draw people to you because it's time to arise and shine. And when, why does God say that in Isaiah 60 with all the chaos in the world? Because it is in the darkness that the light of God shines the most. And makes impact. So we're in a time of transition. By the time they got to Sinai, they needed to be dead to self and alive to God. So that God can, could espouse himself to them. Can I go a little bit deeper over here? And so as, as we are in this time and season, God is preparing us as we come into Pentecost. So that he can impart something into us. So that we can become his government. Amen. On the earth. In our communities. To exercise. To legislate. To adjudicate. The will of God into the earth. And if we don't stand up. These Moabites are going to run roughshod all over you. And they will trample you to the ground. Every day they are making new laws. That make it harder and harder for you to be a Christian. COVID-19 was not just something to make you sick. It was to stop the church. Because when the church cannot gather then the presence of God is not there. And there's a difference in a phys- between a physical gathering and a cyberspace gathering. Because in cyberspace, you could be, you could be warming your macaroni cheese in the microwave while, 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 while Pastor David is broadcasting on your iPad. And even though you're hearing... You're not listening. And you're not listening. There's no impartation. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Can I go a little bit deeper? We've got to get our act together. Daniel chapter 7 says that Satan is trying to change times and laws. How is he changing times and laws? Because he has all his soldiers and all his footmen that are going into the, uh, the legislative houses, uh, 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 the executive office, uh, uh, and, and the judicial systems, and so on and so forth. And they congregate together and they change laws because when you change the laws, you can change the times. And we're sitting here, and please, Shandai Randai is not going to change it. Shandai Randai will help us to know what God is saying and what God wants us to do, but you've got to put legs to your prayers. We can't sit here and have a hunky-dory time in the Holy Ghost and bask in the glory of God. Then you get out there and you go back to the same old pitiful life that you've lived up till now. And just bask in a memory like Peter, James and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. Should we build three tabernacles here? And let's just stay here. No, you can't stay here. Because there's a devil out there, hallelujah, that is changing your times. That is changing your seasons. That is making life uncomfortable for you. And if he could, he would wipe out church. He's already put gags on our mouths so we can't speak. And this is the decade of the mouth. This is, I in pay the decade of the mouth. 
Your mouth is not supposed to be muzzled. Even though you're wearing a gag, you can speak through it and you have to speak. Because if you don't speak, other people will speak and their voices will be heard. And their angels will project what they're saying while we are still doing Shandai Randai over here. The heavens belong to the highest bidder. Many years ago, in 2005, I think it was, I flew into the nation of Kenya. Kenya is the eastern gate of the African continent. And to, so, so Kenya is the hub for Uganda, the Congos, uh, 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 Burundi, and all those nations. And I was walking to the lounge in the airport. I, I don't play with airports. The last time I was here, I think I was teaching on gates. So the airport is a gateway. Altars are always at gateways. Just like the Jacob slept at an altar. And he wakes up and says, this is the gate of heaven. The battle in the earth is about altars. And there's one altar called the golden altar of the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. You read that in Revelation chapter, in Revelation chapter 8. That is the operational black platform for all the operations of God in the universe. It's called the golden altar of Christ. Can I go a little bit deeper here? So I'm walking in the airport. Now in the airport, on the way to the lounge, there's a mosque. And when I get there, the mosque is crowded. It's spilling out into the corridor. And next door to the mosque is a chapel. And the chapel is empty. And I'm sitting in the lounge, and the mosque does not empty. One person goes out, another person is coming in. Meanwhile, the chapel is empty. And because I was, in those days, I was traveling a lot. Anytime I walked into those at airport or walked into other airports in the world, they, uh, they had mosques. The, just these guys are always praying. And the chapels are always empty. These guys, they will stop their work at the, their prayer time and take their mats. They don't care who's watching them. And they will roll out their mats and begin to pray. And they do that five times a day. I'm asking your neighbor, how many times a day do you pray? Not to talk about how effective is your prayer. Are we praying kingdom prayers? Or are we praying, God, I want... Another word, I desire, I acquire, I claim, I possess. Touch your name and say, I, dollar I'm just sharing. We need to wake up. I need to wake up. You need to wake up. We all need to wake up because according to the, the, church, the letter to the church of Laodicea, we're in a lukewarm age. And if we don't wake up, Jesus said, I will speak you out of my mouth. Revelation chapter 3 from verse 14. And so everywhere I'd go, these guys are praying while we are just having a honky-dory time. And in my nation, from 2015, in four years, Islamic terrorists have come from all over Africa and have penetrated our nation and basically taken over the government, the judicial systems, the legislative systems, and all the security apparatus of our nations. And if there's something about Nigerians, Nigerians are praying all the time. 
I don't think there's a people group in the earth that pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, and pray till they fall down dead like Nigerians. And we have thousands of churches. You can go down a, a, a 10 mile street and find 100 churches. Meanwhile, with all the churches dotted all over the nation, and with so many people, 200 million people, and 60% of them were supposed to be Christians. Yet, fundamental terrorists could come into the nation and take over a whole nation. And I have watched my brothers dying, being burnt up in churches. In this war. And our governments are not doing anything about it. Because the government are part of them. And those kind of people, because they're Fulanis, they have covenant with one another. And their covenant with one another supersedes any law or anything else. When they go to their mosques, they are not contributing to build their mosque. They are contributing to build the cause of Islam. Are you with me? And when they go out, these guys are ready to die. For them to die is an honor. While we are afraid to die. To them, they are ready to die because they have got 70 virgins waiting for them up there. So they're brought up to die for their cause. To them, it's a privilege. They welcome it. While we are scared of it. Touch your neighbor and say, the heavens belong to the highest bidder. So the question is, what price? Are we supposed to pray? Because if I remember what my Lord said, if anyone will come after me, let him he deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. There's a difference between deny, deny, denial of self and self-denial. Self-denial means I'm going to give up eating macaroni for a week. Denial of self means I'm ready to die for a cause. Because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, because we love not our lives unto death. You can't be an overcomer unless you're ready to love not your life unto death. And that word, testimony, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, is a Greek word, martus, which means a martyr. And until we're ready to die for our a cause, a righteous cause, then the enemy will always be able to, to hit home runs. And we can't catch the ball. The heavens belong to the highest bidder. I used to live in a nation that is the headquarters of voodoo in the world. And I learned to respect the devil because he's no pushover. We can only defeat him in the wisdom of Christ because he knows more of the word of God than we know. He preached the word to the word. It is written. Cast yourself down the mountain and he will give his angels charge over you. He was preaching the word to the word. Are you with me? Yeah. So I learned to respect him. And those voodoo guys, they would build altars exactly the way the scriptures pattern them. And they would sit down, and they've never read a Bible in their lives. And they would sit down at those altars, and they could tell you your past, 
your present and your future. With an amazing accuracy. And I used to marvel. And my, 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 I, would, I, I would cry out to God, I wish I could hear God the way they, they hear from their God. They would sit down at that altar for seven days without moving, if that's what it took to get a word from God. Meanwhile, we are coming to church and calling all the prophets so the prophets can give us a word. Touch your neighbor and say, you start to hear from God for yourself. Touch your neighbor and say, get your own word. I would rather learn how to hear from God for myself than have to run here and there to inquire or prophets or bring prophets in so they can give me my word, my word, my word. The, the prophetic word is supposed to confirm what God has already spoken to you not take the place and that's why we have the whole mess that we have today because we all our prophets that we respect prophesy about Donald Trump and the opposite happened just like the opposite over here happened why because we're sitting on our laurels having people prophesy but what are we doing about the prophecies? What are we doing? Because God said it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Because we're in a time where God is not fighting for us like he fought for the children of Israel in the wilderness. Once you cross the Jordan, God's not going to fight for you. God is going to fight with you. So you have to get up, you have to take up your spiritual weapons, and you have to move, and as you move, then God will move with you to back you up, not go in front of you. Touch your neighbor and say, we need to shift, we need to shift. I've seen power, because you go to that voodoo man's shrine, and he will tell you, bring a lamb, bring a cow, bring a chicken, and bring a tiger. And believe you me, if you have to go hunting in, in the forest for a tiger, he will not do his hocus pocus until you bring that tiger. And he will, when he's doing his stuff, if he tells you, stay like this. For two hours. And he says, if you put your other foot down, you will spoil the voodoo. These guys will stay there for two hours. Because they want something from that altar. That once they make the wrong move, they will lose it. They will bring anything that... The voodoo priest asks for. I know a guy. He met the group of voodoo priests at a river, at a lake, just like all the lakes in Florida that have Leviathan inside. I have done more work than many of you in Florida. We've been to the 70 abortion clinics that are in Florida. We've been to all the lakes. I did some work somewhere that I can't talk about. We've been to St. Augustine. We've been up and down the length of Florida. Prophetic actions. Since, I better leave it. Because when we did it, God had given me a word where I was. That I needed to come and do it. So the Florida to swing the right way for the 2016 elections. I 
Are you with me? Yes. This guy met these voodoo priests and he drank the blood of 35 human beings for power. In one year, he became a multi, multi, multi millionaire. He lived in a French country called Côte d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast. And they told him that every year he has to come and renew his covenant. The next time he came to renew the covenant, they asked him for his mother. That his mother needed to be a sacrifice. It doesn't mean that he was going to take his mother physically to the altar and... No. They do it by what the French call telecommand, remote control. By spiritual manipulation. They are adept at doing it. So to keep the power, his mother dies. A year later, they're asking him to come to renew the covenant. He needs to bring his, their firstborn son. Please, let's not be deceived. Out there, around the world, many people give their children as sacrifices for power. And do you know what is happening every day here in America? Do you think that George Floyd was a random accident? It was a spiritual manipulation. Look at what it triggered. One life. And it's not... Can I talk? It's n Black lives matter, but black lives don't matter. The organization Black Lives Matter was conceived from satanic altars in Nigeria. The founders, with their own admission, on videos I had watched, unless those videos were doctored, which I don't think so, confess that they, they work with spirits from an altar in my homeland. Are you with me? Yes. So anything that is conceived of the, from the wombs of darkness can never bear good fruit. If the, the root is not holy, the branches can never be holy. So the whole Black Lives Matter thing was just a narrative that they wanted to use for their own spiritual and political agendas. And because of our woundedness, because they were trumping a cause that we could identify with, they were able to get us to do their dirty work and develop a narrative. Are you with me? Yeah. But the organization Black Lives Matter is not about Black Lives Matter. It's not. And one death sparked worldwide protests, worldwide marches, not just here in America, everywhere in the world. Can you see the power of one matchstick lit a forest fire? There's something spiritual about it. And that was an altar that was raised and now that altar is speaking and demanding for more sacrifices. And we read about it in the news, but what are we going to do to shut down those portals? There was a certain place here where 50 people, including the shooter, died. Yeah. On, in a jubilee year, 50. On the eve or the day of Pentecost, 50. Yeah. Now tell me that that's coincidence. In the creation, 
God is a God of coincidence. Everything is purposed or allowed. Nothing happens by happenstance. Touch your neighbor and say, the heavens belong to the highest bidder. When the guys, the voodoo priests, ask for his son as a sacrifice, because they understand that as they walk in their spiritual stuff, the sacrifice always gets higher and higher. And we have to understand that in our walk with Christ, as we carry that cross, like Paul said, I die daily. Every day there's a new desire, there's a new ambition that you've got to die to. Every day you walk with cross, with, with Christ, you're walking the same footsteps up Via De La Rosa to Mount Calvary, where you are dead to self, so that you can come to a place where, like Paul, you say, Not I that live, but that in me. So they understand these things. These guys are using our own playbook. And they're fleshing it out while we're still reading it, we're coaching it, we're preaching it, we're singing it, but we're doing nothing about it. Touch your name, I say, that's why the heavens belong to the highest bidder. How many souls have you won lately? Soon there'll be laws that you can't speak to anybody. Well, it's already here. And if we don't if we keep quiet we will do the kingdom of God a disservice the world is talking about herd immunity well that's a sign for us we need to have herd immunity because if we're all speaking the same thing and if we're all standing up for righteousness and for justice then they will become afraid of us the reason why they try to shut the church down is because they're afraid of the church but the gates of hell shall not prevail. If you stand up. Are you with me? The heavens belong to the highest bidder. They wanted his eldest son and then he found his way to my church. Because the night that he was supposed to fly in, he was supposed to meet them at this lake at midnight. The flight was late. And they had told him, if you don't come by this time, your children are going to die. So he ran to me. And I had to take him through a year of cleansing and deliverance. But he got all his millions from sacrifices. He drank the blood of 35 people. Let them sacrifice his mother by spiritual manipulation. They wanted his eldest son. And that's when he couldn't pay the price. But look at the price he has already paid. Are you prepared to pay that commensurate price for the God you're calling on every day? Because if not, that's why the heavens belong to the highest bidder. The king over here. Despite the prophecies that of victory by not any old crack prophet. By Elisha himself that is carrying the double portion anointing of Elijah. And says, thus saith the Lord. Dig ditches and the Lord will fill them with water and you will have a victory. And what time did he do this? The Bible says at the time of the morning sacrifice. When was Elijah on Mount Carmel? The brought the, the fire down on the prophets of Baal at the time of the evening sacrifice. It was always at a time of sacrifice. Which means the power of your sacrifice is what moves heaven. I beseech you. Present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and presentable to God, which is your reasonable service. The heavens belong to the highest bidder. If they're sacrificed,
sacrifices outweigh your sacrifices, then it will shift and turn the tables and the tides in the favor of them rather than you. And every day they are shifting, they are sacrificing people. People are dying. Every all blood that is shed unrighteously becomes an offering and raises an altar. And an altar opens up a portal for more demons to come in. Are you listening to me? So all these deaths and killings is bloodshed. And the Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 18 and Leviticus chapter 19, for three things the land is defiled. Idolatry, bloodshed, and sexual immorality. Which means the land refuses to cooperate with you because you have defiled it. That's why the, uh, the land vomited out the Canaanites because they had defiled it and their cup of iniquity was full. And so the land is defiled and the land has come into covenant with them because they are paying a price. They are shedding blood, hallelujah, whether by, uh, uh, by aborting fetuses or whatever. And you see, I, I, I did a lot of work and every abortion empowers somebody in high office. It empire, empowers the people in high offices because Molech was the God that keeps the people in those offices. Do you think they will ever outlaw abortions? Not unless you get into Congress. Not unless you get into the legislative houses. Not unless we begin to use their concept of herd immunity and invade all those spaces. You've got to train your children to be politicians. And I'm, talk I'm saying politicians, not politicasters. Because what we have today are politicasters. Otherwise, you will lose. They won't have a future in our nations. Not the future that God desires for our nations. It's time for an army to rise. The kingdom of heaven software violence and the violent take it by force. We must gather herd immunity. We've got to break down all our denominational barriers and say we are one. One army. One for all and all for one. Yeah. Otherwise the enemy will steal your destiny and the destiny of the children from right under your nose. Because they're paying a price and we are still reluctant to pay the price. And because they're paying a higher price, they can tip the scales in their favor in the realms of the spirit. There was a victory that Elijah had promised. Just like the James Goals and the Dutch Sheets and the Chuck Pierces had, had spoken what God's mind and God's will was. But what happened? What happened? Were they liars? No. But all prophecy, personal prophecy, is uh, uh, contingent on your compliance and your obedience to the conditions necessary to fulfill and bring the prophecy to, for, to, bring the prophecy to fulfillment. So God can say, I'm going to take you into a promised land. But if you're still murmuring and grumbling, you're not going to enter. One whole generation, despite the promise of God, did not enter the promise. Only two, Joshua and Caleb. Are you with me? The heavens belong to the highest bidder. We come to church and we say, David... The service must be two hours. After two hours, I'm gone. But that guy at that satanic altar, because he knows what he wants, if the, the voodoo man says stand like that for five hours, he will stand without moving. But when we come into the house of God, we begin to dictate our terms. It's, we've come to a time where we can no longer relate to God on our terms. We must begin to relate to God on his terms. Because up to now, if the truth were to be told, we'd be relating to God on our terms. 
God, this is what we want. This is the way we want to do it. So you endorse what we're doing as we ain't going to do it. And God just, oh, my children, my children, my children. Meanwhile, these are the guys who do whatever is needed to get to their results. They will sacrifice babies. They will sacrifice human beings to stay in power. It's not new. Right here. The king, when he saw that the battle was against him, the king of Moab, he took his 700 best men and they couldn't break through. The last resort was take my, my son, his firstborn son, who was going to be heir apparent, who was heir apparent to the throne. And he puts him on top of the wall for everybody to see and sacrifices him right there for the, in front of the whole of Israel. What happened? What happened? There is no greater sacrifice in the Bible than the sacrifice of a firstborn son. So he paralleled the sacrifice of the father giving up his only begotten son. So you can imagine the kind of spiritual power that was generated in the satanic realms. That a portal was opened and a myriad of angels, demons from hell, just, just flooded and overwhelmed the children of God. That the Bible says the children of God ran. They ran. Despite the promises of victory, they were just there. All they had was a last stronghold, the king's castle himself, that they had to take. But when they watched that man take his own firstborn son, his heir, this is the length. He, have you ever, th th think about it, have you ever thought of sacrificing your firstborn child? Well, he thought of it. And he did it and paralleled the sacrifice of the father for the son, which had not yet happened physically, but had happened in spiritually because he was a lot, Jesus was a lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world began. So you can imagine the spiritual power it generated. The boom, the gates of hell were torn open. And millions of demons came and overwhelmed the children of Israel and possibly the angels that were fighting with the children of Israel in spite of the fact that God had given them a, 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 a word of victory. Touch your neighbor and say, because the heavens belong to the highest bidder. The tides were turned because now there was a demonic sacrifice. So the issue was, who gives the biggest sacrifice? Did the children of Israel give a sacrifice? They were at the morning sacrifice that Elisha himself presided over. And in spite of their sacrifice, the king pulled out a bigger sacrifice. <laughs> yeah? And overturned what God had said for his people. And because of the indignation, Israel retreated. In spite of what God, the promise God has given. He has given us exceeding great and precious promises that we could be partakers of his divine nature. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 4. But if we're not going to pay the price then the enemy will always have the upper hand over us because they will always have numbers on their side in the spirit and in the physical because we are not paying the price. Two sacrifices. One was a morning sacrifice of a morning lamb because Deuteronomy 19 says that they had to sacrifice a lamb in the morning and a lamb in the night. But what was needed to bring an overwhelming victory was a greater sacrifice. And the king pulled off a greater sacrifice. Hey, God moves according to sacrifice. 
he moved because Jesus Christ was a perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice. Did he not? To bring salvation to the whole world. Amen. Did he not move when Abraham took Isaac to Mount Moriah? And God said, because you have done this figuratively, because God knew that Abraham was sold out. If God didn't stop Abraham, it was a done deal. Abraham was going to do it. And Acts chapter 7 says, Abraham believed God would raise Isaac from the dead. And God said, now Abraham, you have done this thing. Now in blessing, I will bless you. A conditional oath now became an, uh, an unconditional ratified oath. And God moved. Did God not move at the threshing floor of Onan? When David went there to offer sacrifices after 70,000 Israelites had been killed by the, the sword of the angel. And when David offered peace offerings, burnt offerings, peace offerings, fellowship offerings, God moved and gave David the greatest revelation of his life. All his life, if David couldn't build the temple, at least he wanted to know the, the, the location of the temple and he wanted to be able to get all the resources together and the greatest revelation came to David after that sacrifice and God said this is the place of the burnt offering of Israel David is standing on the same spot where Christ is going to be crucified David is standing on the same spot where Abraham stood and offered up Isaac and he's standing on the same spot where the temple is going to be built by Solomon and the glory would come down. All by what? Sacrifice. Cornelius, his sacrifices became a memorial in heaven. That on the trading floor of heaven, there was a transaction. And God said, because of his arms giving, they have become a, an altar, a memorial. <laughs> I'm going to save his whole household. And salvation came to his whole household because of his sacrifice. We were called to be burnt offerings unto God. And until we become burnt offerings where our lives don't matter anymore, the cause is more important than our lives, then God cannot move the way he desires to move for us because the heavens belong to the highest bidder. Those politicians, they stay up all night long strategizing and planning and doing their own hocus pocus. And then during the day, they act out what they have planned that night. While we are sleeping, the enemy is sowing tears. And then we wake up in the morning and we say we want a word. You should have gotten a word while you were praying last night on your watch. It's time to man the watches of the day and the watches of the night. Jesus said, watch and pray. The enemy is busy day and night planning while we are sleeping and doing shandarandai in church and going, oh, glory, glory, glory. The glory has to be administrated into your spheres of influence, into your marketplace, into your job, into your office, into your business, into your home, into the, 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 the home next door to you, the family next door to you. So that we can achieve herd immunity by the blood. Of the Lamb. Because the heavens belong to the highest bidder. And if they are consistently paying a higher price than we. And they're ready to kill themselves. And we are not. Then they will always have the upper hand. Because they can invoke more of their military than we can. Because the angels only hearken are angels who are ministering spirits sent forth to minister to them that are heirs of salvation who hearken to the bidding of his word. And if we're not aligned with the word, if we're not doing what the word says, then the angels have a problem with us. 
and will say, Angel Gabriel, come to my help. And Angel Gabriel looks at what you're doing and says, I ain't coming, Jack. <laughs> and guess what will happen? Some demon will come as an angel of light and bring a scroll. That is not from God. Because the heavens belong to the highest bidder. What price are you prepared to pay to see God come down and fight with us as we take over the legislative systems, as we take over the judicial systems, as we take over our, our, our executive offices so that we can steward righteousness into the earth? We, this house, needs to become an apostolic hub to train and send people into all the mountains of our society. Amen. And we have another three years to do it. Otherwise, the laws will become more draconian and more draconian by the day. They're doing it with impunity. Because up there in Washington, D.C., they have majorities. While we are still hiding in our prayer closets in Shandai, Harandai, do it, God. And God says, I'm not doing it. You do it. I'll back you up. Yes. And you say, but God, I'll be victimized by the press. So what? God, I could lose everything. So what? Because you're going to die anyway. Naked you came, naked you will go. So what do we have to lose? And if you do it, God says, that's my man. Angels, take care of his whole family. Take care of all his descendants. Let them be blessed. Aren't we the seed of Abraham because of the price that Abraham paid? But if... We don't, we're at crunch time. We are at crunch time. Yeah. How long, Elijah said, will you halt up between two opinions? If Jehovah is God, then come and serve him. If Baal is God, then stay there. It's crunch time. Don't let your nation be taken from under your feet. I've seen it happen in my country and in African countries. So I'm telling you something that I have seen and I have experienced. And it cannot happen here. Otherwise you will lose your place in God's appointed scheme of world events. And God needs every single one of you to get up. Become proactive as salt and as light. Because if you don't pay the price, they are ready to pay the price. They're paying the price every day. And because they're paying a higher price than we are, they're tipping the scales in the spirit for their advantage at our disadvantage. It took an Elijah to confront a whole government of Sister Jesse and Uncle Ahab. <laughs> and look, that guy became the most wanted man in the whole of Israel. All the security apparatus of Israel was tracking Elijah. And he became discouraged, but the work still has to go on. Elijah, you want, you want to get discouraged and have a pity party? Sit down. Anoint Elijah. Elijah, come. Because God doesn't have time. Israel is crying about Moses. Moses is dead. Moses is dead. Hey, Joshua. Hey, listen. You've been mourning for 30 days. Moses is dead. Finish. You get up. Be strong. Be courageous. Go against those giants. Take the land. If you fight, I will fight with you. Here. 
my sword is drawn, but I'm going to give you strategies. You're going to walk around Jericho, and you're going to do it seven days, once every day, and on the seventh day, you're going to do it seven times, and you shout, then I will work with you. But if you don't do it, and if you don't, strat- if you don't implement my strategy, you will lose. So Joshua, get off your laurels. Go, be strong, be of good courage. Where are the Caleb's? Caleb said, give me my mountain, lest I die. I'm ready. In other words, I'm ready to die for my mountain. The heavens belong to the highest bidder. Stand to your feet. Let's just begin to pray in the spirit. Spirit of the living God, put this message, impart strength, impart courage into the heart of every single person under the sound of my voice because it is crunch time. There's a people that must arise. There's a mighty army that is arising. This end time army, the triumphant reserve. Lebra Hamde, who will pay the price? Karos Kabadayas. Lebra Kuse Brede Kabrandos. Bradaya Kabedes. Braduz Ikaya Tale Bradayas. Bradayas, Bradayas, Kurias. Likadaya Baro. Lebroste, Bracus, Brahataya, Barandus, Ibracus, Tecande, Lake Reste, Cabadayas, Libodos, Barasteca, Cabarando, Zimelea, Lea Bosa, Brando, Zataya, Cadele, Badayas, Reduci, Macuria, Le Madea Badosa, Lord God, let the people arise, Lebrahande, Isca Brahande, let us see the rise. Lebrahande, that will become burnt offerings. Lebrahande, for you, O oh God. Lebrahande, Lebrahadoske, Spirit of the Living God. Lebrahande, Ishka Badayas, Madaya Bahaya. Lord, may my life become a burnt offering to you. Let our lives become a burnt offering to you. Lakaria Tanarabuskaya, Lebradaya Kabales Kabadayas, Libro Sonde Ikata, Maraste Zabadayas, Lebrados Cabrehende, let glorify arise, Lebrahuse Kabadaya, and fulfill their mandate. Raise up Caleb's, raise up Joshua's, raise up Deborah's, raise up Esther's, raise up Gideon's, let the mantle of Gideon come upon somebody, let the mantle of Esther come upon somebody, let the mantle of Deborah come upon somebody, let the mantle of Caleb come upon somebody, let the mantle of Gideon come upon somebody, Kabadaya Badis, Mabrakoseka, Lebrakataya Brende, Brando Sabradis Icarias, Le Catayas, Le Brondozo Bradi Cabosa, Le Balaya Brehiste. Now lift up your hands. There are Caleb's over here, Le Brahande. There are Deborah's over here. There are Joshua's over here. Le Brahande Hishka. There are Esther's over here. Le Kabodos Cabriande. There are Ruth's over here. They are Naomi's over here. Le Makara Laboska. Le Bra. There are Barak's over here. There are Samson's over here. Me Kataya Badoske. Le Brahande. May you enter into the mantle, the mokal calling, the callings. Le Bra. Peter said, make your calling an election show. Lebrahande, Lord. Lebrahande, Ishkabadaya, Brodos, Kebriande, Brahuse, Makatayas. Lebrahande, Spirit of the Living God. Just begin to touch your people over here. Lebre to galvanize them into action. Lekadaya, Brodos, Kebriande, Brodos, Kebriande, Lebrahuse, give them courage. Lebrahande, strength. Lebrahande, is there not a cause? La Katarias, Lebrahande, Zabadaya, Lebrahoske, Makatayas, Manda Lebrahande. My, my brethren, there's a price that we all always have to pay, and the price never gets less, it always gets more. 
and more and higher and higher and higher and higher. That's my walk with God. It came to a point where God said to me, if you don't invest everything you have into the work I have called you, why should I invest in it? And I would give some, like Ananias and Sapphira. And the Lord would say, and something would happen to make me give everything. For, for, for 11 years, 10 years, I have lived like Elijah at the brook of Kerith by faith, supernaturally. The world has come to that place. We had an economic meltdown around the whole world. We, we've exhausted, most of us may have exhausted our savings. And we're just depending on God to sustain us supernaturally. Like God sustained Elijah at the book of Kerith. Kerith means to cut covenant. God is looking for covenant people in this hour. Psalm 55 5, verse 5. Gather all my saints unto me who make covenant by sacrifice. Covenant by sacrifice. It's your sacrifice that tells God whether your, how, how rich your covenant with him is. Hey, we all are covenant with, in, in the, in, 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 with the Father in Christ. God did not make a covenant with you when you gave your life to him. He made a covenant with Christ because a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And we break our covenants every day. So he made it with Christ. So when we are in Christ, we become beneficiaries of the covenant the Father and the Son made. What is true for the type must be true to the anti-type. Abraham, Uncle Abraham was fast asleep when he cut up those covenant uh, halves. Yes? yes? And then two people came down. A smoking fire pot and a, sm and a flaming torch. The smoking fire pot was the father. The flaming torch was Jesus. And they walked in between the pieces in a figure eight. Horizontal eight, which is infinity. And Uncle Abe was fast asleep. So the covenant was not made with Abe. It was made with the father and the son, with Abe as the beneficiary. But now... God is saying all of us must have a personal covenant with him. David had a personal covenant. Samson had a personal covenant, the Nazarite vow. What is your personal covenant with God or God's personal covenant with you? Because you don't make covenant with you. God is a covenanter. He brings the terms and says, you just put your John Hancock over there and then it's a done deal. Because that's what it's going to take. Gather unto me my saints who make covenant by sacrifice. It's now time for the tough to get going. There's a whole of Lake Mary out there. Why do you think God put you in Lake Mary? Just to have Kat, Kat Kerr coming in and saying everything she says and then you do nothing about it? You just fill your journals with lines and lines of prophecy that will not come to pass unless you're ready to pay a price. And you give up your life as a burnt offering to God. David said it this way in Psalm 118. Bind the sacrifice to the horns of the altar. Tie your life. Tie it so tight that you can't undo the knots. So you can't escape. Because every day we want to escape. If the Lord had told Paul all the things he would suffer for his sake, Paul would have said, God, get somebody else. <laughs> but as we grow and as we walk, he gives us grace. Because there's a cause. Touch your neighbor and say, is there not a cause? Even if we're not going to see the promise. At least we can secure the promise for our children. Yeah. 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 
Our children are under attack. Yes, they are. They're killing themselves. Yes, they are. They've been indoctrinated with a whole lot of junk in school. And we have lost the, our value system and belief system. The next generations, if they, and that is the spirit of Agar. And you need to cut the head of Agag off. When Samuel said to Saul, why did you not kill Agag? Because Saul wanted to use Agag as a trophy to get social acceptance and significance. And Samuel said, Agag, come here. And he hacked off Agag's head. He said, you have made the mothers of Israel barren. So what was Agag doing? Causing abortions in the mothers of Israel to abort the future and the destiny of Israel. And that's what Haman was doing in, in, in Esther's time because Haman was an Agagite. Touch your neighbor and say, cut the head of Agag off. Because the issue you don't deal with today will live again to come and trouble you tomorrow. It was an, an Agagite claimed the victory of killing Saul, even though he was lying. So the issues you don't deal with today, they will live again to come and mess us up. And they always come back stronger. Touch your neighbor and say, cut the head of Agag off. And we have to become that army. We have to penetrate other strategic places. We have to start to train our children to penetrate those places. We, and we have to train them with the right value systems and the belief systems. So that we can make America great again. In God's eyes. Not in man's eyes. Lift up your hands. God wants to release mantles. He's looking for burnt offerings. A burnt offering. Jesus was the burnt offering of Israel. We have to become burnt offerings to God. Where nothing matters anymore but him. Beloved, I beseech you. Present your bodies as living sacrifices. Holy and presentable to him which is your reasonable or acceptable service. So nothing less than your life as a burnt offering is acceptable to God. And if you know that God is speaking to you to begin this walk of the burnt offering, then please come forward while we pray. Kabos, Zebredis, Kabadaya. Because I know that God wants to release mantles. He's raising an army. An army of people. The triumphant reserve, Chuck Pierce calls it. Soldiers who will not break their ranks. Because the days are evil. The times are evil. Our children are being killed in the streets, whether black or white. And we, of the commonwealth of heaven, there's no Jew, there is no Greek, there is no black, there is no white. We've got to stop this nonsense and let's stop letting people divide us along racial lines. Because we're all of the commonwealth of heaven, born out of the loins of our heavenly father. We have to disabuse ourselves of the narrative of the media world that are indoctrinating and programming our minds with a whole load of junk. This is our constitution. By this we live. By this we stand. And by this we die. This is our constitution. There's no room for any other constitution. And so we will not rest until we make this the constitution of the land. And of our nations. Lift up your hands and just begin to pray.
There's a Caleb mantle that God wants to put on somebody. There's a Deborah mantle that God wants to put upon somebody. There's a Gideon mantle that God wants to put upon somebody. There's an Esther mantle that God wants to put upon somebody. There's a Samson mantle that God wants to put upon somebody. There's a Barak mantle that God wants to put upon somebody. Lift up your voice and just begin to cry to God. God, whatever mantle you want me to wear in this season. Kadayas Badish, Labradus Abrandos, Kadiria Dos, Kabadaya Bredes. Zore Kabbalah, Lord, man to your people. Lebraham, they conscript them into this end time army, into the triumphant reserve. Lebra, that is rising even right now. La Kataya Balis, Lebra Jose Kabbalah, Lebraham, the Holy Spirit begin to touch every single person. Lebraham, the end of Bedis Kabbalah, put your fire. Le Kataya Baros, Lebraham, they put your wisdom. Lebraham, they put a charge on their hearts la caria bosque brehende commission your people lebraham they commission your army lebra let an army arise out of glory fire lebraham they let an army arise that will go across the land lebra let the people arise lebraham they let them arise and shine for the light has come and let the glory of god appear upon them badayas lebra cosque bredis cabrandos bradayas y belesque and they touch fire Lord God touch 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 Lebra Hataya Bredis Lebrokos Kebrahande raise up fathers raise up fathers raise up mothers that will command their children after them Lebe let your fire touch them Lebrohosa Brade Brahuseke Brihim the spirit of the living God Touch and use her, use her, oh God. Le kaboska makaria taya, mande isete. Touch her, le brahande iskabadoske, le brahande. Come on, everybody, just hold your hands together, le brahende iska, and stay as far apart as possible. Zahashataya, zibrahende. Come, 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 come. La brohoske brahande, spirit of the living God. Lebreheshte kabroste, Lebrahande, come, 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 Spirit of the Living God. Lebrahande, God, what you have put upon me, put on me life. Let it rise up as a mighty one. Take it. Spirit of the Living God, hold those hands, lift them up. Holy Spirit of the Living God, Malaska Brende. Spirit of the living God, Ikaya Badoske Kataya Kadirias, Ye Kamakaya Bronde, Le Makuria Brehende, raise an army out of this house, Le Makaria Hande that can take Lake Mary and beyond, Le Brahande, Holy Ghost, touch them now, Le Madus Kamahaya. Shataya Kalelebos Kabrahaya. Use this generation. Use them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord, puts raise up a Caleb in the house. Raise up a Deborah in the house. Lebraham de Iskabadaya Broste, Brahun de Iskadaya, Mande de Yes, God, Abraham de Eskebrediska Braha, Rabos Cabrahaya, 
Lebraham de ish kabrahataya bredes, zakataya kadaya kadis. Libra, lift up your hands. Lord Jesus, you're the captain of the host. Lord Jesus, you're the captain of the host. I present to you a host. Touch them, work in them to will and to do of your good purpose. Fill them with the knowledge of your will by the spirit of wisdom and revelation in intimacy of the Lord Jesus Christ that the eyes of their understanding may be enlightened to know the hope of the calling of Christ upon their lives Lord mantle raise up Caleb's here release the Caleb anointing release the Deborah anointing where the mothers of Israel release the Naomi anointing Lord where the Esthers single out and touch the Esthers where are the Gideons raise up a Gideon army who know how to blow this trumpets let them become trumpets raise up the Gideons where the Samson's touch the Samson's even right now, out of here, raise up, mantle your people. Where are the Elijahs? Where are the Elishas? Where are the Joannas? Where are the Marys? Touch them, touch them, raise them up over here. Let an army arise out of this house, Lebraham, that will go forth into the land to fulfill your great commission, O oh God. Lebraham, they help them, let their lives be a burnt offering. Lord, they're out here because they're surrendering their lives to be a burnt offering unto you. Lebrahadoske, honor their commitment. They don't know what it means, but you give them the grace to be able to walk on from here. To become that burnt offering. May the cause of Jehovah be uppermost in their hearts. May they take up that cause. According to Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Become by the blood of the Lamb overcomers who love not their lives unto death. Out of here bring and raise up politicians. Abraham, they raise up legislatures. Raise up adjudicators that will penetrate, that will penetrate all the systems of government and governance. Raise tribes of people that will enter into those places to establish righteousness. Did you not say that righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne? Lord, we declare new beginnings in this new season. Thank you. Raise up strategists. People that can strategize, hallelujah, that can enter and possess the land and take over the educational system, take over the media, take over government and governance, take over art, sports and culture, take over business and finance, take over science and technology, stop the, the technology manipulation. Lord, slay the Nephilim and transfer their wealth to the hands of the righteous who will build your kingdom systems with it and bring reformation for the glory of God. Our hearts cry, is thy kingdom come. In Jesus' mighty name, we cover you and we cover your household and all that pertains to you with the blood of Jesus Christ even now till we meet again tomorrow the Lord wants to put a fire there's a fire coming from heaven that he wants to put in you as you agree to become his burnt offerings in the earth to carry his glory into all the spheres of our society the heavens belong to the highest bidder. God bless you.
Thank you. If everyone could just take their seats for a moment. Let's remember tomorrow night we start at 6 o'clock. We have probably a, at least another 100 seats that could be filled, and I believe there's a lot of people out there that need to hear the message. Um, the one thing I love about Yemi's uh, message is always it's there's a the spirit of truth is on it. There's a great intensity that he brings, um, probably like none other than than any guests we have. So, uh, but I'd like to sow into him and give you an opportunity if we could just sow into this word, into this ministry. If you need a credit card slip, please raise your hand. I know some people have already come forward, but ushers, uh, look around. Let's get the credit card slips to people with their hands raised. And um, if you're making out a check, make it to GFC or Glory Fire Church. You can also go on our website, glorifierchurch.com, and click on that donation button. And again, remember, tomorrow night he's going to bring another word. Just How many would say that that's a very key message for this time it's way past due but it's a uh, it's a key message and um, and uh, so tomorrow night he's going to bring another one it's just as intense so uh, please invite at least 50 people and uh, let's pack this place out and because um, we want to reach as many as we can amen so if whenever you have your offering ready if you haven't done so yet, just please bring it forward and put it in the treasury boxes. I'm just going to pray and close out the evening. And again, remember tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, get here early, join in worship with us. It sets a precedence in the atmosphere. So, Father, we thank you for every person here. We thank you for every heart that just received that word from heaven. And, Lord, we ask that you would intensify it uh, with a divine purpose and uh, conviction within our hearts every day. For Father, I ask that no one would ever forget that message, Father, and, that, and there's a calling that each one of us has upon our life to affect this region in this area. Lord, we ask that we would even go from here and affect nations and teach nations. Lord, we ask that you would bless Yemi. And Father, I, I thank you for this apostle who goes through from nation to nation with a word of intensity, uh, because he lives the life. Be in the, in the quiet place, Father, before the altar of heaven. And Lord, we ask that you would bless him and his family, give him favor, blessing, divine health as he travels. And Lord, uh, great rewards. I hear heavenly rewards. The great are your rewards. And Father, I just ask that you would bless him tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. We'll see you tomorrow night at 6 o'clock.